Okay, so the title of the sermon today is No Other Doctrine. Now, let us pray. Lord God, thank you for bringing us here today. I pray that the Holy Spirit come down through this service and through those people that are listening. Lord, bless every single one of us here and give us understanding of your word. In the name of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. So no other doctrine. Now what happens is, Paul's writing a letter to Timothy. And he's saying to them, I charge, charge these people. Go and tell these people, command these people. Okay. I abide, abide still at Ephesus. So something's happening in Ephesus. Okay. When I went into Macedonia, that I might is charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Go and tell people not to teach any other doctrine. So what's happening? Immediately we've got the word of God, an amazing gift to us. Straight away people are using it, changing it, adding, removing. Now we know the, uh, the penalties in the Bible for adding to the word of God. We know what it is. God will add the plagues unto you. The last words in the Bible are don't mess with the Bible, basically. In a nutshell, okay? Now, is this going to stop people? No. It's the same as when you go to court. They said, you swear on this Bible. Well, firstly, it's wrong to swear. Jesus says, don't do it. <laughs> so he's giving you a book, <laughs> telling you not to swear and telling you to swear on it. Okay, so we don't do that. But we see that here. If you're a liar and a cheat and you go to court, swearing on the Bible isn't, I mean, it's a sin that you don't care about. If you just murdered someone, you know, you don't care. So we've got that now. People will add to the doctrine, okay? They will remove from the doctrine. Now, I've added this for last week to clarify. Because some people say I condemn all rich people. No, I do not condemn all rich people. Just to clarify, this is what I said, okay? Charge them that are rich, okay? Tell the people, command the people that are rich, okay? That they don't be high-minded. Now, everybody here knows what this means. Sometimes people get a little bit of money. Sometimes you people are working over here for Greek people, you know, or, or, or some people that have got a lot of money. Maybe they're Russian people, maybe they're Jewish people, whatever. And they become high-minded. Okay, so we were in this church. We definitely understand this version, this uh, verse. Okay, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. So, if you're a rich person, for example, God's given you that. It's not yours. God's allowed you to have that. Okay, so charge them. Okay, that they remember that. Also, to put trust in this world. For example, you're rich. Maybe you should help that person. I did that. Somebody was, uh, what shall I spend this money on? You know, I had a lot of money. I'll buy a new, I said, give it to poor people. Everyone was shocked. Everyone was giving this person advice what to do with this massive amount of money. I said, give it to poor people. Everyone kept quiet. Okay. That they do good, that they be rich in good works. Not by another, someone said the guy had 180, whatever. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, but that guy helps his people, you see. So to be honest, I don't really mind. If he's helping his people and he's helping poor people, then I don't care how many roles. There's no poor people in this country. Then I've got nothing to say about that person. I will judge someone who, who rules righteously, okay? Okay. Yeah. But not everyone's like that, okay? So be rich in good works. Remind people, charge uh, rich people about that. Ready to distribute, okay? Your employer's rich. Give it to poor people sometimes. Why don't you help that person out? You've got all this money. It's not rude to say. It's the word of God. Maybe you put it better than me, more charming than me. Do that, okay? Okay. Willing to communicate, okay? Talk to people. 
sometimes people won't speak to, you know, those people don't have enough money. Well, you know, you're no different to them. Okay, so lay up in store for themselves a good foundation. Okay, don't build a better, bigger house. Store up treasure in heaven against the time to come. You're not going to live forever, Mr. Rich person. Now, don't forget, I'm not against all rich people. Okay, talking about a sample. Okay, so that they may lay hold on eternal life. Okay, so that's what I meant by last week. I just want to get that clear now. Now, back to the sermon. Okay, keeping the sound doctrine of God. Okay, now we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Now, what do I mean by this? The word of God is amazing, okay? But we have to use it lawfully. Does someone sin? Yes. What do we do if that person sins? Do we punish them ourselves? Do we make their lives miserable? Do we gang up on that person? Do we tell that person that they're wrong? And what they're doing is wrong. You see, there's different ways. Use it lawfully. Okay? If someone, I was with someone, I, 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 I must have been very, very young. Now, she says to me, go and beat up that man. He's stealing groceries. Now, yes, I was insecure. But this man was stealing food. What does that tell you? He's not a bank robber. He's not mugging anyone. He was stealing food because he was hungry. What should I do? Should I run to the police and tell them that man took a can of beans? Arrest him. Or do I use it lawfully? Do you remember what the, the preaching last week on the greater good? What's the greater good here? Yes, stealing is wrong. But if that man's hungry, what do we do? If I caught someone stealing from the church, what were they stealing? Food? I'd give it to them. Use the law lawfully. Okay? The law's good if you use it lawfully. Okay? So make a righteous judgment as Christians. Okay? Morning, my brother. Okay. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. For the ungodly, for the sinners, for the unholy, the profane, for murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, for manslayers. What's he saying here? Well, let me, let, me, let me tell you something. You didn't need the Bible to tell you that murder's wrong. You don't need, you didn't need that. You knew it was wrong. Do you know why he wrote it? So that there could be judgment against these people. The laws we have today are based on the biblical rules. Thou shalt not murder. Don't steal. You don't need a book to tell you it's wrong to steal. You know. But we need the book as a judgment. Where does it say it's wrong? Here. In the book. So we need that. Okay? So if the law is not made for a righteous man, because people figure it out. Some people naturally do the right thing. Okay? But we've got it there. Okay? For mongers, for, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, people that kidnap people and sell them, because they needed a book to tell them that that was wrong, but God did it anyway. Okay, He told them. I felt compelled to tell the church today because we've got a lot of single girls here. Maybe I need to explain something. Okay. There's a different type of men stealer. Now, because I come from a sinful life, I'll tell you about this. There are people out there that are going to want to take someone you meet away from you. Okay? Now, this isn't the one mentioned here in the Bible, but I'm just telling you. There are people out there that want to take what you have just to take, just for fun. When you meet someone, this, these people will flirt with that person to get them away from you. Not because they want that person, but just for fun, just because they take pleasure in evil. Beware of these people. 
It's not the meaning here in the Bible, but I, I, I read it and I thought I wanted to share that with the church. Okay, so for perjured persons, um, I mean, at, at the moment, I'm uh, there's somebody who's told the police a load of lies about me to try and put me away. He perjured himself. Two people have actually done this to me. They perjured themselves to get me into trouble. Okay, these people are going to burn in hell. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Yeah, yeah. sound doctrine. Okay, so anything that goes against the Bible, sound doctrine, we ignore it, okay? We ignore it. Now, <laughs> I don't know how many of you have seen that film. Uh, he quotes, uh, and it's become super famous, Ezekiel 25, 17. What's that film? Uh, Pulp Fiction. He quotes this part, okay? And it's taken from the wrong Bible version, so it doesn't make sense. But this is what it's about. So do you know, it's not supposed to be you're pointing a gun to someone to steal their hamburger or whatever it is he's doing there. Okay? This is the actual reason. And I'm telling you this today in church because when God delivers your enemies to you, you're going to need to remember what I said today. Okay? Thus said the Lord, because the Philistines have dealt by revenge. You see, can anybody here tell me the difference between justice and revenge? Please. Loud. <laughs> Go on. I can't hear you, brother. Speak. Yeah. Yes, that's right. It does. Yes. That's correct as well. That's better than how I was going to say it. <laughs> Maybe you're preaching church one day, bro. Okay. So, he's correct. Okay. It's a personal thing. I want to punish this person and take revenge on them. Or is it justice what I want? When evil people suffer, that's justice from God. But what the Philistines did here, they overdid it. They overdid it. They took revenge on Israel, but they went mental doing it. They, they slaughtered and slaughtered for no reason. There was no need for it. So Jesus said, I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon them. When God brings your enemy to you, don't go over the top with your punishment, okay? Don't do that. Have justice, yes, but don't go over the top, okay? If I say sorry to Raya, if I say sorry to you, don't say, right, if you're really sorry, you'll hit yourself with a baseball bat 50 times. No. <laughs> don't go over the top with, um, you know, with making someone suffer. Don't do that. You don't need to. Okay? Go to the next one. Please. Okay. You don't need to write this one down, but he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You'll see how this comes into the service the next line after this. Okay. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall also not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Does it say it will prosper now, right now? Lord, I prayed for a wife. I prayed for a husband. And I'm waiting right now. I'm going to sit by the doorway and wait till it happens. You know, and you've instantly prayed. So, you know, there's a man waiting for you at the door with a rose in his teeth, Bible in his hand, good Christian man. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay? In his season, at the right time, you'll meet that person. Let's not be impatient. In season. Okay? Let's go to the next one. Now we focus on the original message. Okay? The sound doctrine to keep. Okay? No other doctrine. 
I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. God's predicting what will happen in the future, a different type of shepherd that doesn't make, you shouldn't be terrified of your pastor, of your leader, supposed to be a leader. He's supposed to be your servant. He doesn't rule over you. Okay? Now, they will fear no more. You see, these people in these days, they terrified the people. They were terrified of the scribes. They were terrified of the Pharisees. Terrified. They will fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. I will raise unto David. Who's he talking about here? A righteous branch. A king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth, in the whole earth. Now, we know who he's talking about here. Okay, no guesses needed. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. In, and this in his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Now, the sound doctrine handed down by Jesus. Go to the next one, please. Now comes the punishment for those that change the rules, okay? that twisted the word of God, okay? that spoke another doctrine. This is thy law. This is the people that listen to the false doctrine. A punishment for the people that listen to it. This is thy lot. This is what you wanted. The portion of your measures from me, said the Lord, because you've forgotten me and trusted in falsehood. Now I'm knocking on this now. How many people have you heard? I hope you'll be all right. Knock on wood. What's knocking on wood going to do for you? Nothing. You trusted in falsehood. I crossed my fingers. That's falsehood. It's okay because I pray to Saint Cecilia or whatever. That's trusting in falsehood. There's one way to go, okay? For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. In the church I found their wickedness. Morning, brother. In my church, in my house. God's saying, I found these people in my house, in my church. Because this isn't our church, brothers and sisters. It's God's. It's Jesus's. Okay? Wherefore, their way shall be unto them slippery ways in the darkness, and shall be driven on, and fall therein. Their ways will wrap around them and choke them. Okay? I will bring evil upon them in the year of their visitation. When I visit them. Because God loves judgment, remember? And he will visit them. Okay? Go to the next one. You keep doing it. I didn't realize you were doing it without asking. Okay. I've also seen in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. What horrible thing did he see? They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers. And none doth, none doth return from his wickedness. What's the point of the word of God? Is to get people away from sin, to save them, bring them back to God. Okay? This is the point. Now, if you don't open your mouth, if you don't say anything, they don't turn from their sins. Why should they? You've told them God loves you. Now, I've had someone say to me recently, Mario, stop saying all this anti-gay stuff. Stop saying people, you'd get more people in your church. Sell out, basically. Say a popular doctrine. No, thank you. I fear God too much for that. <laughs> I fear his punishment worse than yours. Okay, no, I'm not going to say well, like these other people do. Okay, anyway, they are all of, of them un, unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Okay, this is what they're like to me. 
this is what they're like to me, this is what they're worth to me. Now, if they were the lowest, that low, and God sees them as Sodom and Gomorrah, then these people have sunk pretty low. Okay, thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy among you. They make you vain. They make you believe in yourselves instead of God. Okay. I had last week, I had people bibbing up and down to try and stop the church. I know Satan was behind it. It didn't work. Okay. Well, they're strengthening the hands of the evildoers. Because if someone's doing evil and you're going to, God, Jesus loves you. He loves you if you're gay. He loves you. No, no, no. Stop saying that. <laughs> you're not going to get these people to repent, which is the whole point. Okay. Now, so don't listen. A command. Do not listen to the words of the prophets that prophesy among you. I've had a very special vision. God told me to, you know, run down the beach and do a handstand and stuff like this. No. Don't listen. It's a command to people. Do not listen to these people. They make you vain. They make you believe something that isn't real. They make you believe in yourself. I, me. Okay? They speak a vision of their own heart. And not out of the mouth of the Lord. I've heard many people say, God sent me to do this. God told me to do that. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. I know because I know the Bible. And what you're saying, you're preaching. You are preaching against the Bible. And you get up on your stand. And you stand up in front of your fake church with your fake gospel. Self-made by yourself. With words that are in your heart, not from God. Okay? They still say unto them that despise me. Now, who are the people that despise God? They're the people that go against Him. We're like that sometimes. If we sin, we despise God. We go against God. Okay? Just like if you was married and you sinned against your wife, that you'd be like you despised your wife that way. The same thing when we turn traitor to God. The Lord has said, you shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Jesus loves you, baby. You know, he's the hippie with the, you know, flowers in his hair and stuff like that. That's not real Jesus. That's fake Jesus. You can keep it. That's a vain vision in your own heart. Don't preach it to people because you will lead them to hell where you're going. Twice as much, yeah. Next one. I don't know how you've managed to know when I'm going to the next verse. Okay. For well, who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived, who has understood and heard his word? Who has marked his word and heard it? Did you get what I was saying, God's son? Did you understand? Did you really understand my words to you? But they stood, but if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to actually hear my words, they would have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Sound doctrine. No other doctrine. Okay? The counsel of the Lord ahead of this. Go to the next one. Okay? We read in the book of Revelation that people will build big caves and hide in them and then, you know, cause destruction in the rest of the world. Okay? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord. Do not I feel heaven and earth? These people that say these things, do they think they can hide they can trick a few people. They can trick some followers who they will lead to hell with them. Because they're sent by Satan to take people out of a real church and, 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 
and filled her head with craziness. Now we've been to some churches where there was some real craziness going on. And, and a lot of the members walked out, which I'm thankful for. Okay? We've had guest preachers when Mark was pastor. And he says to me, I, I regret calling that person. We did. There were some people that thought or showed that they were from God, but they weren't. Okay? They deliberately went the wrong way. Go to the next one, please. The prophet that have a dream, let him dream. This guy that has this special vision, holy God sent me to do this. No, he didn't. Okay? This prophet that has this dream, let him do that. And he that has my word, let him speak my word. Amen. What is the chaff to the wheat? You try to compare the word of God with this fake guy's vision. And who's going to come up trumps? You'll see. Let that happen. That's an please. You see, my God's word, isn't it like a, a fire, says the Lord, and a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? My word is that fire. You'll see the difference in my words to the words of someone who, who, you know, changes his own doctrine, does his own thing. You'll see the difference in my word because God's word will come true. But also it's like a fire. You understand this when you preach. You feel a burning thing inside you, okay, to say the truth. Now the truth will make you unpopular, but for some reason you'll still say it. You're going to offend people, but you want to offend people. There's some sister at the back here who told me she was at a dinner party and someone said, oh, I turned my back on the Lord because uh, there were some dodgy priests. And she shouted at him, you will turn your back on the Lord for people like that. See, the Bible says there are some vessels in the house of the Lord. Some to honour and some to dishonour. So there's some shameful people in the house of God. And, and God knows that. But when you hear the actual pure word of God, it will affect you in this way. You go, wow. Everyone's got that verse that makes them feel a little bit, you know. I've got loads of them. <laughs> okay. Now. Let's go to the next one. It's the same verse. Okay. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Okay. This is a complete mystery to people. They found this rock and they can't figure out how it got there and how it split apart. But this is how the word of God is. It's so powerful that it overshadows everything. It takes over everything. It destroys the false teachings. It destroys everything. It gets rid of it. Let's go to the next one. Now we get some behold. And I love this word in the Bible. I really do love this word. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. Now there's a lot of people that use the cross. You'll see a cross outside many places. Doesn't mean it's Christian. You'll see a cross outside the fake church of Scientology, which isn't a church. But you'll see a cross there. They steal my words. They steal the cross. They try and steal stuff from God. They'll quote. Now remember what we said about rat poison. It's 99% good food and 1% poison. Okay? Otherwise, the rats wouldn't need it. They will tell you the word of God and then mix some poison in. Now you say, but that guy, that guy told me all this great stuff from the Bible. How can he be a bad guy? The Bible wasn't his. <laughs> he quoted from the Bible. Okay? 
He told you things from the Bible. Then mix some bad stuff in with it. Doesn't mean he's a good guy. Okay? Doesn't mean that priest is a real priest. Okay? It doesn't mean his words are very special. They stole his words. They stole the words of God. Okay. Behold, I'm against the prophets, saith the Lord, that useth their tongues and says he saith. He saith, God told me. Now, sometimes if they want to get your attention, they'll say, God, God spoke to me in this way and told me to do this. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. You're just saying that. There was a video clip that I wanted to put in here, but I didn't have time. Please forgive me, church. But there is a guy out there who says, I had a debate with God, and God asked me my opinion. I said, yeah, this is what he said to a church. And I said, God, I don't think you should do that, he said. I'm seeing here the blasphemy. The blasphemy is killing my ears. I'm sitting here thinking I wanted to fly over there, find this guy, and beat it out of him. And this is what he said to the church. I'm sorry for my angry words, church, but this is how I feel when people abuse this. Okay? So they use their tongues and say, he's safe. All right? To get your attention. Then again, behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams. Okay? You know, it's not Martin Luther King he's talking about. I had a dream. <laughs> it's not, that's not who he's talking about. He's talking about people that, uh, uh, you know, I had a dream from God that's up to the number or something. Okay? Say the Lord, and do tell them, the people that cause my people to err by their lies, and by their lightness, their softies. I was telling them up. He says, well, why are I? I said to him, I'm angry with them. They're trying to get me in trouble with Mark. They say, Mario preached this and Mario preached that. He says, I said to him, no, I didn't say anything like that. I never said anything like that. Luckily, my videos are on YouTube now. <laughs> and there's proof of all the stuff I say. I said to him, they are a bunch of softies. A lot of these preachers are a bunch of softies. Too scared. They're too scared, Freddy cats, to offend someone in the congregation. They don't want to lose a congregation member. So they make a little soft service. Their lightness, the love, love, love preachers. Okay? They refuse to say anything else. Oh, they smile. No. Okay. So by their lightness, yet yeah, I sent them not. Not commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit these people at all, saith the Lord. They're no good for the people. The, the visionaries... <laughs> I'll call them. They're not helping anyone. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now, when these people or the prophet or priest shall ask this saying, What is the burden of the law? Thou shalt then say to them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. What is the burden of the law? Now, sometimes we say this I've got to get home, I have to go to church. I say that, church. You don't have to. You choose to. You love going to church. I know I do. I've made this mistake. I can't go. I have to write the sermon. Oh, no. What have I said? It's the greatest blessing of my life to stand here and preach the word of God, which I'm not worthy to do, and I know that. I feel like the Apostle Paul, though I'm nothing like him, when he says, I am the least of the apostles. I might be the least of all pastors. Okay? When someone says to me, okay, what's the burden? What does God want me to do to change, to, re to repent? Listen, repenting is the greatest gift that God's given you. He's given you the chance for eternal life, which you don't deserve. He's given you a chance to come to him again, which he doesn't have to. Who are we that God should consider us? Okay, so don't be a burden. Let's never say anything like, this is a burden. I will say, I get to go to church tomorrow. That's how I should have said it. I get to preach tomorrow. I can't wait. It is my joy. It is our joy to be Christians. It's our choice. And it's a beautiful thing. Now, 
This is a command. Okay, that's right, go on back. Say to them what version? Say to them, you're going to be a better person if you become a Christian. Better husband, better wife, better child, better worker, better everything. It's better for you. It's not a burden being a Christian. Obeying the Ten Commandments isn't a burden. You know, I don't want to worship false idols in the morning. I didn't want to do that anyway. It's not a burden to me to follow that wall. I don't want to take the Lord's name in vain. I don't want to. Neither does anyone else. It's not a burden. The rules are there and we should have been following them anyway. Next one, sorry. Okay. I say to you that likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented. More than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. There is joy in heaven. The angels rejoice when someone repents. Can you imagine that? The whole of heaven, this guy's changing. Look how happy we are. We're coming towards the end, church, of the service. Now, if this is how they feel in heaven, imagine how God feels over you when he sees you change, when he sees you come back to him. If all the angels are getting up and rejoicing because you've changed, one person's changed. This is the point of keeping that sound doctrine. This is the point of charging people to teach no other doctrine. Because if you wore it down, they don't repent, they don't repent, and this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen, which is this is what we want. We need that doctrine strong, not light. When someone, when a doctor wants to cure you, he, he gives you a tiny, tiny bit of these. No, he doesn't. He gives you the full medicine. Why? He wants you to be cured. He wants you to be saved. He wants to save your life. The same with God. Give the gospel full measure. There you go. Don't apologize. There's nothing to apologize for. You're helping them. They should thank you. Have that attitude. Okay, go to the next one. We're at the end now, church. Okay. Winning souls is worth it because there'll be joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. Now, if we don't have that sound doctrine, we don't have that tool to break the rock, that fire, okay? If you teach any other doctrine, don't. If you've tempted to teach any other doctrine, don't. Don't say this is wrong or that's wrong if it's not in the Bible. Don't say someone has to do this section if it's not in the Bible. Don't say everything's going to be all right. If it's not. That was a point of Jeremiah. Everyone kept telling the king everything's going to be alright. God's with you. He goes, well, but he wasn't. Everything was not going to be alright. Yeah. We've heard from Jeremiah today. We've heard from Timothy today. But we heard from God today. Okay? Keep that sound doctrine. Okay? Don't let anyone change it. The command of God is to not listen to these fake people or fake gods. Now, let us pray. My Heavenly Father, I thank you that you were long-suffering and patient with us. I thank you that I heard the word of God purely in my life. You were calling me for most of my life. I wouldn't answer. I pray that many people will hear you and answer straight away and come to you straight away. I pray that this church keeps your sound doctrine with love. I hope that Christians around the world get purged from this false doctrine, from these man-made rules. I hope that Christianity gets purged. We hope that Christians become a light to the world, that they see us, they hear us, and hear you through us in your word. They keep that doctrine. I pray that these people with a false doctrine become shunned, exposed. Lord, bring them down. I pray that the people hear your word purely in their lives and they hear it and put it in their heart and follow it and believe and change and repent. I pray that there's joy in heaven over so many people that repent. I pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be your name. Amen.